Greetings, Commanders! Mini here! Welcome back to another episode of Over-Engineering! Now, I bet you're wondering, why is Mini in the Battle Barge? Well, she needs an upgrade. So, we're here in the Laksak system at Trader's Rest to see Lei Chung for his shield upgrades. So why are we here? Thermal resistant shields. So you need untypical shield scans. You can get these by sitting in super crews and scanning ships. Thanks Frontier for still not fixing this. Refine focus crystals from blowing up people. Well normally I just go to a hazardous research extraction site in the Annihilator and blow things up. That's what I do. And then for ruthenium, believe it or not, that same crashed anaconda in O'Hare 2B. Where is that nice little crashed anaconda? Yeah, oh, O-R-R-E-R-E 2B. -E -E in this little star system, on this planet, at around, let's see, right here is where the crash site is. I know it's opposite of the north pole of the planet, opposite of Guin Survey. And it's this little patch right here. The exact coordinates are 43.8122 by negative 173.9722. That's roughly around this area. If you saw the 500 upgrade video for shield boosters, I also listed this there. But, you know, I figured if this is your first time watching one of these videos, or you're curious about bi-weave shields and how effective they were, and upgrading them, then uh, that'll be a good place for you to get that ruthenium. Otherwise, these other two materials are relatively easy. So, thermal resistance can go up to 60. Integrity also increases, but the kinetic resistance goes down. So, let's see. Review outcome. We know that thermal resistance of 40 or higher is what we want. Integrity, don't care about. Kinetic resistance, hopefully around the 35 mark, but it's probably going to go down. But our thermal resistance is going to go from negative 20 to at least negative 4.4 with a high roll of 40. Now, the thermal resistance is, of course, important, but I am mainly looking for, once again, a high base roll plus an experimental or secondary effect. So, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic while I do all these upgrades, and depending on the results, I'll come back when I'm done. So anyway, be back in a moment, commanders. Wow, first roll. Okay. So, our region rate up 5%. Now, this is the main thing I am worried about uh, on these shields. I got a decent roll on this, so I'm up to, well, like 30% thermal resist. So, I'm going to take this. Anytime I get a regen rate plus a bonus to thermal, I'm taking it. So, I'm going to go apply this. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for is a regeneration rate. Not the broken regenerate, mind you. The base regeneration rate so you see we have 6.1 shields per second and afterwards if we lose this uh, secondary effect it drops down 5.76 i'm hoping to figure out what the max value for regenerate bonus is anyway uh, i'm gonna finish these rolls and i'll come back with that info Now that's more like it. 9% regen rate. The highest I've seen so far is 10, so that's not bad. To add any bonus to explosive resistance, no big deal. But we're at about 39.46 on the thermal, with the maximum being around 40 to 42. Kinetic resistance took a bit of a hit. Integrity's high. So, let's go ahead and apply this. And uh, I will disseminate the rest of the rolls to... My class 7 shield generator, which I will use on the Annihilator. Oh, 
Okay, class six, thermal resistant bi-weave. This will be for the Daka Daka gunship and the plasma bomber python. Okay, I've got 20 rolls left for my class 5. By weave shield, this will be used for my Fertilance, and I believe also maybe for the Vulture? I don't know, we'll see. I'm thinking I'm going to have to get some more of these materials again, and uh, possibly further tweak these shields in the future. Now if you don't mind, I have to take my um, fat ass and uh, Go get my conda, because I can't fit class 4 shields on this thing. Be back in a bit. Okay, so I've got like 17-ish rolls left for my class 4 seed by weave. I don't think I'm going to do a class 3, class 2, and class 1, because I'd never really fly a viper anymore, and that would be pretty much the only thing I'd put it on. Hey, if I decide to do something stupid in the future with uh, thermal by waves, then hey! I'll uh, get these materials again, because they're not hard. Anyway, let's get this one done. 17 rolls to go. Now this roll isn't so great on the regeneration rate, but the broken regen went up, lost some mass, or actually 10.2, yeah, I'll actually be losing some mass after this. Thermal resist went down a little bit, but since I'm low on rolls, I'm going to take this broken regen 9% uh, increase. So if the shield do go down, they come back a little bit faster. That's one thing bi-weaves are good at. Whoa! 10% regen rate bonus. Low distributor draw, a little bit more power. 27 we're losing a bit on that thermal resist but the regen rate is pretty good i'm gonna take this roll and lose a little bit of thermal resist but that's okay 10 percent regen i mean i got shield boosters right i'm not gonna take it Okay, so as tempting as it is to uh, actually do the testing this episode, I think I'll wait until next week to actually test the shield values and the resistances and whatnot uh, for these new bi-weave shields. But uh, I will get back to Shinrata Desra and see what the totals came out to, so I'll be back in a moment. Come on, jump a con is fat. It's not uh, quick. Jump smart though. Okay, now that we're back home at Jameson Memorial, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at all of these shield generators and the shield totals. Let's check out the 8C by weave. Not a lot of shields. <laughs> Do I need that now? Not a lot of shields. Uh, let's see, we got really good explosive resistance, thermal resistance is really good, we took a slight hit to kinetic, but we do have a 10.9% regen rate bonus, and that's really nice, and an integrity increase, so, yeah, I don't know how that's gonna help, but cool, yeah. So yeah, like 320.3 base shields, uh, let's check out the next one, class 7. Not a lot of shields on this one either, but we're also dealing with a very mass heavy ship. So the optimal hull mass on this one got increased, the optimal strength got increased, the kinetic resistance is better than the other one, and the thermal resistance is at 41.4%. This one I did not get a regeneration rate bonus. For the class 6, we're dealing with around 120 megajoules on this ship. Uh, mass decrease, integrity increase, optimal hull mass boost by 4.3%, optimal strength plus 3.4%, point 
distributor draw decrease, kinetic resistance down by around 14. So on average, the 14 to 15 level is probably what you want to aim for on the negative effect for kinetic. That way you can compensate for that with a resistance augmented shield booster and bring it back up. Thermal resistance on this one isn't that great, but it is at 35. Unfortunately, we didn't get a regeneration rate bonus on this one. Now on this one, we have a mass increase of 3%. It only added like 0.67 tons, so not a big deal. Um, integrity bonus, regen rate went from 2.2 to 2.4. So like 0.2 shields a second with a 6% bonus. I'm not really thinking that that regen bonus is going to be terribly great. You might want to really just focus on that thermal resistance instead. So 39.6% resistance versus thermal, almost maxed out. Explosive resistance, slight bonus to that, so that's good. 11% uh, decrease to kinetic resistance. So this class 5C uh, biweave got some pretty nice totals. Now on the class 4C biweaves, um, I just went ahead and threw them on the uh, Fragdalant since that's pretty much what it was for. Uh, grade 5 thermal resistant. So we got an integrity bonus, a power draw increase, a regen rate from 1.8 to 2.0. That's 11.6% bonus to regen rate, but with not a lot to show for it, honestly. Distributor draw decrease from 0.6 to 0.55, so that won't eat as much uh, power distributor while it's recharging. Uh, kinetic resistance is down by around 10%. Uh, the thermal resistance is only like 27% on this one, not the 40 it could be. So, I'll probably have to go back and throw more materials at those engineers. But I, I think for the big two that I got them for, for, the class 8 and the class 7, those are decent enough. And the class 6, because that's going to go on the, the gunship or the python. And then that'll be good for testing, since those are medium slash maneuverable ships. But uh, the class 5 slash class 4 shield generator can also be used not only on the frag to lance, but also on a vulture. Now, okay, cool, bi-weaves, awesome. But we're really just looking at the thermal resistance. So, let's go ahead and swap to the annihilator. Throw the shield on there. Let's see what that does for my shield totals. Now one of the first changes I'm going to be making before I install these shields is taking a look at the shield boosters. I still have my top three shield boosters, which is my 67.2, 66.9, and 66.1. Um, underneath that, I'm going to be running three resistance augmented shield boosters. I wish I had another one of these that had a shield boost total to help pad the shielding a little bit more with good resist totals, but this is what I have. 15.4, 15.2, 15.2, 15.6, 15.3, 15.3. And a 15.5, 15.5, Not great, but still pretty good. Now, once we throw the Class 7 Biweave Shield on here, looking at the Prismatic Shield with these exact shield boosters, I'm sitting at around 4797.0. Keep in mind, I dropped a Thermal Resistant Shield Booster that also gave me extra shields, and I also dropped a 61% Shield Booster. Well, 62, I think. No? No, 66.1. I dropped a 66.1% shield booster off of it. This is why the shield total is lower. But we need to increase the resistances to make the shield more effective. So by putting this uh, Class 7C Biweave shield generator on here, with its thermal resistance bonus that is over max, we got a kinetic resistance that isn't great, but we still have some pretty good totals on this. Integrity bonus, optimal hull mass increase, optimal strength increase, so that will make the overall shield value higher uh, kinetic resistance decrease but a massive boost to the thermal at 41.4 so let's transfer this to the ship and then take a look at our resistance totals so right now we're sitting just shy of 2500 megajoules of shield with a 52 percent resistance versus kinetic that's mainly because of the secondary effect on the shield generator and with a 61.7 thermal and a 67.6 explosive resistance so that thermal resist means I only take about 38.3% damage of any enemy attacking me with thermal weapons. So basically beams, pulses, bursts, um, kinetic damage, not as good. But the shield value resistances that I have now are much higher than what they used to be versus the heavy duty prismatic shields. And compared to the Imperial Annihilator shield value and resistances, 
That thermal resist shield really fills that gap on the thermal resistance, but I'll have to punch in the totals into an effective hit point calculator to see which setup is actually better in between the two. Now that we've checked out the totals, this is the current shield generator setup for the Imperial Annihilator. With all percentages taken into account on all the engineered roles, so we're only dealing with the shield boosters, the resistance totals, and the shield generator itself. With no pips in systems, this is very important, raw shield strength is still 5,512. I take 70% thermal damage, 45% kinetic damage, and 37% explosive damage. So this is incoming damage dealt. All these resistance totals are completely accurate, which is really nice. So these totals here match the uh, in-game value. So technically for thermal, I have 30% resistance. For kinetic, I have 55. Explosive, I have 63. Yeah, 63%. Let's double check that. So 54.7 kinetic. 30.5 thermal and 63% explosive. Double check the values. Ding, ding, ding. That all lines up. Cool. So this is the amount of damage that I'm taking from enemies and how much gets through. 37% of explosive damage gets through. 45% of kinetic damage gets through. And 70% of thermal damage gets through. This is how much pips in combat are useful. You see that jump? My absolute shield value went up to around 6,760 with one pip in systems. So normally it's still at the base 5,000, but you add a pip, well, there's another 1,000 megajoules of effective hit points because your thermal, kinetic, and explosive resistance also increases. You see that? Now watch what happens when you do two pips in systems. Massive reduction to incoming damage and a big bonus to your effective hit points for your shields. Three pips, four pips. I'm only taking 15% from explosive, 18 from kinetic, and almost 30% damage from thermal. The absolute shield value is 13,779. So this absolute shield value, this is what we're looking for. These and these kind of matter versus each basic one, but this is basically the rounded off total. So we're looking at with four pips around 13,779 effective hit points on the shield. So the main point of this is to find out, are prismatics with heavy duty still good? Or going with something with thermal resist being better? Okay, now let's finally compare the differences in between the prismatic Imperial Annihilator versus the Biweave Imperial Annihilator. One thing I want to note, the raw megajoules are still very high. The effective hit points with four pips and shields is still very high. We're getting an additional effective hit point value of 8.268 thousand megajoules of shield total. Pretty awesome, and that's just from the power distributor. So total hit point value for effective hit points with four pips and systems is 13,779 megajoules of shields. That's awesome! Now, with the other Imperial Annihilator, with the Biweave Shields, we're noticing a massive drop in shields! Oh no! But, we're still getting around 3.6k from the Power Distributor with 4 pips. Now, resistance-wise, we're getting 13, 19, 15 across Explosive, Kinetic, and Thermal. Versus 15, 18, 28. Let's just both these back and forth. You can see the resistance changes here and here, mainly versus kinetic and thermal. Not so much on the explosive. But since the thermal damage is reduced, that will help in the long run versus energy-based ships. But here's the real reason. When I'm out bounty hunting or doing anything like that, over a period of time I will use shield cell banks. Over a period of time, those shield cell banks run out. I run out of heat sinks. In between fights, with four pips and systems, it's going to take me almost an hour to recharge my shields. If my shields go down, it's going to take 15 and a half minutes. Not really, because I'll probably just do a reboot. But, 48.26 minutes. Or, like, 48 and a half minutes. That's ridiculous. But with a bi-weave, now keep in mind, we're running 13,779 megajoules with effective hit points due to four pips of systems. 
we do it over this, it's a little bit less than half. But, my shields will recharge in 4 minutes. 4 minutes 38 seconds. 48 minutes 26 seconds. The shield regenerates 10 times faster. 10 times faster. But, I'm still dealing with around 6,000 megajoules of shield. Now, the overall raw shield strength is just under 2,500. But still, 2,500 megajoule biweaves? I think I can deal with that. I might be running purple shields from now on. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to see. However, let's say that I upgrade this shield generator more in the future. And I just happen to get, oh, I don't know, a 10% regeneration rate. That's only really going to matter out of combat, but that shaves off a full 20 seconds. Not fantastic. So I think what I'll be doing is going just for thermal resist by weaves from now on with a little bit of resistance augmented shield boosters like these three resist, 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 and then uh, heavy duty, heavy duty, heavy duty. Yeah, that gives me really good resistance totals. Even if I'm not running any pips and shields, I'm still taking a lot less damage than I would versus this. So 37, 45, 70 versus 32, 48, 38. So maybe a little bit more on the kinetic, but a, like my thermal damage been cut in half. Well, that's ridiculous. Less explosive damage, less thermal damage. That's not bad. I can live with that. So you might be seeing the Imperial Annihilator from now on with biweave shields instead of the prismatics. Or hell, I might just make some prismatic shields that are thermal resist and try all three. See which one I like better. I think next video I'll definitely have to do some testing. Until next time, Commanders, this is Mini for Elite Dangerous Over Engineering. This is Mini, signing out.